So what's on the palette today? Well, some more neutrals and some greens. Let's have some fun. Howdy, howdy, everyone. Okay, this is Claire Lawrence. I haven't been saying that a whole lot in my videos. I don't know if that's really a problem or not. Um, let me know in the comments below whether or not, you know, every time you watch a video, if they should announce like, hey, this is blah, 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 you know, the name and stuff. Um, so, I'm gonna continue my neutrals palette and have some more fun with this. I did some uh, brush stroke uh, paintings before with alcohol ink, and I thought I'd do some more today. So let me bring these in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm dipping into. So these are just little por porcelain palettes. They're great. You can get them in like little shapes like this. There's one that's even a rose kind of, and has a bunch of almost like teardrop type of shapes to it. And it's just ceramic. They're super easy to clean. <laughs> Mine looks really crappy right now. Um, but it doesn't take much. But the fun part about alcohol inks is once it dries up, you just add a little bit of al alcohol in and reactivate and you can continue using it. So this has got <laughs> several layers of copper and silver. The gold one I've, I've used almost up. I'll need to add some more gold to that. So it's, it's really helpful to just keep on using it if it's a color that you go to a lot. So I've got that ready and available. These guys here are, here I've got one that doesn't have anything in it. Uh, just basically a larger version of it. But it, again, it's porcelain. So it's got that nice glaze over it. Makes it super easy to clean up uh, with a little alcohol. And if you notice, there's a little bit of an indent there. And so that way they stack up nice and neat when you want to store them away. So I've got several here that I just put in some alcohol in a couple drops so it dilutes it down and I can just dip into it fairly quickly. Um, and then I've got my trusty fancy tray and it's just got straight up alcohol ink that I put some drops into it and some of it's already started to dry up. So if it do does dry up, just add a couple drops and I use this little guy here which is super, super handy because of the thin point to it and I can accurately add alcohol when I need it. Um, so let's get started. And this is a process where I'm literally just building up color and as the buildup happens, that's when the piece starts taking on some character. So I'm going to work on, let's see what am I gonna work on first. Know why it's always a decision and then it starts really rapidly happening as it goes along I guess I'm gonna start building up some um, some brown some neutrals and stuff I also have a little cup handy that's got a little alcohol in there in case I need to dip my brush in occasionally and just clean it off so I'm not too worried about any brush strokes like I just did this one intentionally sloppy uh, that come across because I'm going to be doing layers upon layers of color and eventually like the strokes will get uh, crossed over with another color and so just from that point alone I wouldn't worry too much about that and like I said it's just a process of putting on a bunch of different colors and having some fun with it Put some good tunes on. And just go with the flow, get lost in it. I thought the next one I would do, and then I would, I think that'll be the end of this series, is um, do some neutrals and some just straight up metallics. I thought that would be really fun. I've been enjoying adding the metallics to the end of these pieces and they're washed out metallics. So it's just a, barely a hint of it, but it sure does add a lot to it. All right. So I'm gonna put more intense green in here and then build up the neutrals on top of the greens. 
uh, that way the green's kind of popping through and I do have a little bit of black that I can tap into. So I'm going back and forth between one that's almost like a Kelly green color and then the other one is kind of a lime color. I think I just picked up some brown. Where did my black run? My black ran. Okay, so we might have some darker green in here too. All right. I'm going to try and add some more green to my palette real quick. It was holding at an angle and that's the black ran into it, which I did not want. So I noticed the last one I did, I used some intense blues and, and some violets and then I built up the neutrals on top of it and I built it up enough that it was allowing little windows of the green to come through. And by doing so, it made the color appear more intense. Of course, I'm gesturing with my hands and you can't even see it because of my, <laughs> my hands are kind of off camera here as I do it again. All right, so now I'm tipping into the lighter browns and I'm just gonna be going back and forth between a couple different colors of browns. And as I go back and forth, I'm gonna show you on here, it'll start to pick up some of the greens in the brushes, in the brush, sorry, not brushes. And so the color will change too. So all these tones will start to merge, hopefully not muddy too much and become one color, but just merge and coexist together. That's what we're looking for. We want to be one happy family. Add a little bit of alcohol to that color, mainly because it started to get kind of thick. I want it to flow. Try not to do it too even overall. I'm gonna start building up my colors a little bit more in a central area as it goes along. At least that's the general theory. Sometimes when you go through the process, either your ideas or the painting talks to you like it's starting to develop in another area. So it's like, ooh, let me try this over here and oh, maybe I need a little bit more of that, you know. So that's kind of the painting, as they say, speaking to you. Some magic happening, basically. All right. So I'm gonna pick up some lighter tones again. And you see how the green is kind of going into the background in the middle, middle zone? As soon as I start putting in the black, it's going to really start popping forward again. Now I'm not adding any heat if you notice that. I was just applying ink only for right now and um, alcohol. Alright, I'm picking up some of the black now. I don't know if I should add a little brown to the black. I think I am. Not sure if it's really gonna change the color a whole lot, but it might introduce some warm tones into the black. You've heard of the phrase like a blue black or warm black or jet black. 
It just helps the colors mingle in with the other colors that you got going on. I mean, you go pick out paint at the hardware store and let's say you just want white walls and you go look at white, you hear, who would have thought there'd be so many different shades of white? I mean, seriously, that's the same kind of thing. You can also have that many shades of black as well. However, it's not usually a color that most people go, gravitate towards as far as painting with. Let's see what I'm gonna do. A couple more there. There we go. Oops. There. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is pick up some straight alcohol and run a couple lines. And sometimes interesting things happen when you just add the alcohol. It starts reacting to the colors next to it. They start bleeding a little bit. I'm gonna start some over here. Gives it way more of a watercolory, um, complex look to it. I might even go and add a lot more black in there. I still got it on my palette. Still got a little bit of brown in there. I'm just kind of mixing it in a little bit. Yeah, you tell them to concentrate when I can't stop talking. <laughs> okay, so you see how the greens in here become a little bit more intense because you've got dark tones in there. Like that little line just kind of wants to come screaming out. So. Speaking of lime, I'm going to clean my brush a little bit. And so I got a lot of dark on it right now. Let's see if I can throw in a little bit more green into some spots. Just a few. I got a lot of dark in my brush. Come on, brush. What I'm doing basically is dipping my brush into alcohol and then smushing it down onto the paper towel. And the paper towel, if you hold it there for, yeah, let's see, let me see if I can show you without it dripping on my canvas here. So if you hold it down on top of it, it'll kind of pull the color out of the, the paintbrush. And so that's what I'm doing there. So my alcohol in my cup actually stays fairly clean. It's not that dark right now considering I've been I've been doing blacks and such. But just because of the nature of alcohol, it'll really pull the colors out. Okay. That's done. Hopefully my green is still nice and watery. Okay. I'm just gonna put in some green into a couple areas here to bump up some intensity. Wipe off my brush real quick as I went through some black. 
Let's see where else. is do we do silver or gold on top of this I'm usually a silver girl when it comes to jewelry so I kind of gravitate towards silver most of the time I think we're good on that part. I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards the gold right now, to be honest with you. Green and golds do look good together. Well, green and silvers look good together, too, but I think it's more the, uh, the deeper go greens that look better with silver. Actually, the deeper greens look good with both, to be honest. All right, now I am doing the same thing. I'm just trying to get rid of some greens that are in my brush so I'm not transferring it to the gold. All right. Let me put these guys to the side. All right, I've got some copper and I've got brass here. I should have had it out knowing I was going to do this. So you wanna shake your brass or your metallics really, really well until you hear that, that ball really going easily. Because they have a tendency to be a little thicker. Well, that definitely was gold there before. So I'm being kind of generous with this only because I use the palette over and over again. And I know I'm gonna utilize that. However, in this case, I'm going to put a little, hmm, do I wanna do it over there? You know what? I'm gonna add a little alcohol to this zone here and see if I can clean it off. And I just gotta, paper towel that I've gotten wet with alcohol. Well, actually, I got the palette wet. It's like squeaky clean. Oh, it's getting there. All right. I don't really have a problem with it picking up extra gold. Or, or I'm sorry, green in there. But, um... For future sake, I don't know if I'm gonna want the green. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding a lot of alcohol and then I'm gonna put a couple drops of the brass in here too. And this basically means it'll lighten up the intensity of the brass. So it's not 100%, it's like diluted down about probably 40%. Okay. So you see there that's 100% of the brass and that's like 40 maybe and I'm just gonna mix that up with my brush and you see you can tell there when I rub it on the side it's just barely giving a hint of it so actually it's not leaving a whole lot behind on my oh there's some okay so apparently it disperses pretty quickly got it maybe I'll add a little more then A little paper towel, get my finger, just to make sure. Okay, here we go. 
mix it up real good, brush it off on the side, and then just go on across. If you get a blob, just go back over the line and blend it on in. Apparently I'm in the mood to do blobs today. Don't mean to. Now, if you notice that when I start from this side and go to this side, that one stroke, I'll deposit more on this side and it tapers and tapers and tapers, and then you barely get any here. So occasionally I'm gonna start over here and do the same coming back. Doesn't have to be the same line, it just, that way there's some gold over here too. And the reason why I like it diluted is that I'm not at actually adding in a ton of gold. It's just leaving hints of it, the touches of it. Right now I'm kind of even, and I don't want that. I like this to appear a little bit more random. Not so. See, even across the white, the white watch. It's not too dominant. It's just a hint of it. Did it again with a blob. All right. That works out pretty good. And if you notice, most of my lines were kind of, they're not exactly like parallel and accurate like this, but it's moving with my hand gesture. So I'm able to repeat a fairly similar gesture by going back and forth. And I can give a consistent swipe, whether it's from the right to the left or from the left to the right. All right, let me bring you in for a close up. All righty. So let's see if we can get to the side, pick up so you can get some of that gold there. Just little deposits of it, just very, very fine, very delicate. And I'm pretty close for you to see that. So. So you see how the lines start taking characteristics of their own? just from going over it with different colors or just alcohol, but it's the alcohol that's reactivating other colors. So they start to interact. And it gets really interesting. Kind of landscapey feeling. If you took a chunk, like right there, that could be a landscape. You know, so could that. Even that. So, fun technique to try. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. But definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. Later, y'all.